it's time for the next lightning talk. Ephraim is talking about um, reproducible containers in the HPC context. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, yes, um, I came into this really more from the sysadmin side. I, you know, I like making things build. I, um, was, you know, I guess I, I work with the scientists, and so they have their. You know they have their software and need to put it out there for the for the papers for other things that they can go and say point to and say here it is here you can see my my results. <laughs> okay, so I was you know, I was home working and so we got a uh, new app that we were uh, going to go and host on the website. It was being moved from old one to new one. So the old website was running on CentOS 5 with PHP 5.3 with Python 2.7 and another Python from the user's home directory and Octave also from 2010 and just everything was from 2010. Just looking and thinking. Hmm? Well tested. Well tested, of course. <laughs> and it also accepts arbitrary files. Upload whatever you want to it. It's literally exactly what we want running. So uh, actually went about it using using geeks. So uh, so with geeks, yes, uh, you tell it exactly what packages go into building each package. So you uh, get the reproducibility in that. Uh, it works also uh, when you have a collection of packages. Every time you install it, you get the exact same packages. You don't have cruft from installing and removing packages. And it also extends into a uh, whole operating system, or in this case, into a container. You tell the container, I want, you tell Geeks, I want exactly this inside the container, and that's it. That's exactly what you have inside. So for the web app, we have all of our old software here. And I guess you know, going back to the container, uh, one of the scripts I hadn't actually patched all the way, you know, just missing remove rmdir, just, you know, it, I didn't tell it uh, where to find it. I didn't put it in the container. It just wasn't there. Uh, so, so yeah, so had old versions of Graphiz, of Octave, all of this coming down to the to our final package. Uh, so with Geeks, it was it was easy to go ahead and to just uh, to create the old versions of the packages. We started with the uh, version of Graphiz that was already uh, already in Geeks. Uh, we changed a couple of things, mostly uh, downgrading the inputs to older versions of them. Octave was basically the same thing. We took Octave, uh, you know, Q Hull had moved around since then, uh, GNU Lib had moved around since then, so just some changes here and there to make everything actually build with older versions of everything. And then for the actual container, in pretty much this was the entire config file for the container. It's, you know, to find the operating system. Uh, you know, bootloader doesn't matter. It's a container. There's you know, no firmware, no packages, just the actual service itself and the DHCP client, so it can actually find the network that you give it. So the service uh, gets fed a service type, uh, a service configuration, which in our case was oh, you can see the mouse. So here we just have the actual package uh, that I built at the end. I told it that it was going to be in the uh, serve HTTP directory with that port. Uh, our little activation script here really just says, uh, before you start, go ahead and run these actions. So it was, you know, if the directory exists, delete it, then recreate it, copy the stuff over, and uh, it wants to write to the directory. So go ahead and make that available. And the whole thing was just behind Nginx. So uh, with the uh, system management, uh, with the config for Nginx, it was really just you know, listen on the port that we had on the previous slide using the root that we had on the previous slide from the configuration. Then uh, the service type down here is the one that we actually passed to the, to the operating system config to make the container. We said, you know, when you activation service type, when you start, run the script. You're using Nginx with the config that we have, and you know. By the way, don't uh, you know? Make sure that uh, PHP FPM is running. Uh, building the container was 
uh, you just was you know, the system container command. You feed it the actual container file, and same uh, serve HTTP uh, folder directory that we had from before was actually mounted in the home directory. But uh, we pulled the container, you know, put it in that spot. I wanted the logs and give it the networking. And then uh, actually we're running on top of Debian, so it was we just used systemd to launch it. So we have the same command as before. We have full path to geeks, but geek system container, full path to the container itself, the same uh, two shares. You, know, you need the path and give it the networking, and then just go ahead and launch it. The whole thing runs under the uh, BNW user, so every so uh, went and you know, all the random files being uploaded were also owned by it. And as far as updating this, you know, every now and then, just ran geeks pull, which pulled in new versions of, you know, not of, uh, of say, Graphviz or Octave, but new versions of, of uh, PHP, new versions of Nginx, uh, all the other packages that uh, you know, I didn't have to go and downgrade. And then restarting the service, it just goes and rebuilds the, con the container itself and it's there and available. From the Debian, uh, from the Debian host that the saw was running on, we just went and said, you know, point Nginx at, you know, at port, uh, what was it, it was 8880, and you know, we got it from the, from the outside. So then, you know, at a certain point in the future when it does go and crash, and we have to go and you know, rebuild the software, uh, we have uh, another, Command I haven't listed here: uh, geeks list generation, geek system list generations. What system? You can list the generations from geeks pull. So it's geeks pull list generations. You go back to the previous generation when it did work, uh, restart the container again, and you're back up and running while you figure out, you know, just what changed this time. So yeah. So with that, we went and uh, you know, we're hosting the. You know, old web app using new technology, or newer technology, newer versions of everything, and everything seems to be working. Yeah. Thank you. Again, we have time for one question. Thank you. Uh, what's uh, the outlook for you? Uh, how will you go about uh, updating now that you have it under a known state so that you can move ahead? Mm -hmm. What are you planning? Right. Okay. I'd have to repeat the question. Okay. Um, just, I'll do it anyway, just in case. So the question was, how do we, um, is how do we update the state? Um, the actual. Uh, package that we were given um, doesn't really get updated. It, it was more of uh, making sure that there weren't anything left behind from previous times we'd restarted it. Uh, as far as the actual packages that we used to, to build everything, uh, I had to downgrade GCC to GCC5, so that was one of the things that, you know, as we moved forward, I had to add that in to make sure that it worked again. Um, But yeah, it was, yeah. yeah, I guess the rest of the de dependency graph of everything that was running, um, more or less, uh, because it's on top of Geeks, Geeks keeps everything else up to date, and then I'm just uh, locking these versions in at their old versions. All right. Thank you, Ephraim. Uh, that concludes, concludes our lightning talk. Yeah, please applaud. Yeah.